Hey everyone, um, today I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to do uh, a figure eight bandaging at the ankle joint. Uh, what I have with me is a, a four inch tensor bandage. Now you can see there's a little bit of an elasticity on that. Um, there is a, an art how to do a figure eight bandaging. Uh, there's also a little bit of an anatomy and physiology towards it. So where do you start and where do you end and how do you wrap? Now, keep in mind that with any injuries, we use the traditional the RICE technique, uh, where the R is rest, I is eyes, and C is compression, and E is elevation. So this goes under the category of compression. Now, don't mistake bandaging to, uh, to replace the protective function of a joint area. Whenever your joint has lost its stability due to an injury, keep in mind that, Compression is done to minimize the swelling, but a bandaging will not provide protection. Now, if you want to protect your joint when you get back into sports, you have to do uh, methods like a rigid taping technique to keep your ankle more stable uh, while you get back to your sports. Now, once again, a bandaging technique is done to minimize compression at a joint area. Okay, so. Let me demonstrate how to do a figure eight bandaging at the ankle joint. Okay, let me take you right in. All right. All right. I'm going to be using my son to demonstrate this technique. Now, quite common um, with ankle injuries, you notice that there's always an inversion type injury. Most people would uh, twist the ankle this way. They'll injure themselves, uh, damaging all the ligaments on the outside or the lateral side of the ankle. So just to stabilize that, now keep in mind that when you're bandaging, always the angulation should be the opposite of the injury. This is something very important too. Now, once again, you can see the bandage. This is a four inch bandage, which is quite commonly used for uh, compression for the ankle joint. Now, keep in mind that for the ankle, this being the most distal segment of the leg, there's a very good chance that you can have a very good swelling on the most distal area. So when you bandage the ankle, it's important you start distal and you end proximal. Meaning to say that you start from the most bottom part of your feet and you end on the top part. So this way that you're gonna push all the swelling towards the heart. So careful not to bandage from the top to bottom and then you're gonna see a puffed up area here after the bandaging technique. So now the bandage I have here now you can see uh, it's got those ridges on the outside, a little smooth on the inside. Now remember to make sure the smooth side touches the skin. If not, you're going to have all these creases. You don't want those creases when you remove the bandages. Right? So, and the tension is important. Now, you don't want to be pulling too much or too less and slack. So there won't be any benefits. Now, if you keep it too tight, so you might be restricting the blood vessels. And what's going to happen is then your feet's going to be too numb and it's not going to serve the purpose. So remember, I don't have any gauge or meter to know. So on, on a uh, common sense factor, just make sure that you have a little bit of attention maintaining while you're bandaging. All right. OK, let's get right into it now. Now, you notice where I'm starting. I'm starting right at the bottom of where the toes are. And you can see I'm just going to go in there. And I'm just having a little bit of a stretch. Let's do that again. The first two wraps is important. All right, let's get it in there. All right, a bit of a stretch. All right, there you go. I did two overlapping wraps right on the front here. Now make sure that always the ankle is on the opposite side of the injury. So when you're bandaging, that's why I'm going in this direction, not in the other direction. So I'm going to hold that down. Now once I finish my two wrappings, I'm going to take this bandage and I'm going to take it above the ankle and I'm going to wrap around and then I'm going to bring it down in a nice eight fashion. I wonder it's called a figure eight and I'm just going to come down. Now you notice when I do that, you see these two lovely angles which I'm going to use as a reference point for me to go one layer after the other. So once I come down and I'm going to come back up Notice this line here, I'm just going to have a little bit of a spacing there, as you can see there, roughly about half an inch. And I'm just going to go up again, once again above the ankle, 
I'm just gonna come down again and now I'm gonna use the other line as a marking and now you can see uh, one layer over the other same fashion third layer going up so again going above the ankle still maintaining that stretch and I'm gonna come down Okay, that's the third one. So I got one, two, and three. Now when I know that I don't have enough bandage left, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up one more time, and I'm just gonna go and wrap this and finish off at the top, right there. So I started distal, I ended proximal. You can see there? Now I know that these are those clips which come with the bandage, you're most welcome to use them. I'm not a big fan of these because sometimes they can cause injuries on the skin. If you don't want to use these, you're most welcome to do a tape or you can even insert it on the top right there. Now once you finish bandaging, so make sure that it's not too tight, look for integrity. Now what I would do is, I would do the capillary fill test, which is a very simple thing. If, if someone has a, a lighter color skin, and what you can do is you can just pinch on any one of those toes and if you let go, it should turn from pale to pink in about five seconds, which happens right here. Now, if you put this too tight, and you notice when I pinch, and if I let go from paleness, if it stays pale, doesn't turn pink too fast, it's a good indication that this bandage is too tight. So you may want to remove the bandage again and wait for about at least 15 to 20 minutes and re-bandage again. Once again, the benefits of bandaging is good compression around the ankle area to reduce the swelling. Uh, it really helps with the healing. Once again, it's not great for protection. It's more for reducing the swelling for the rice component. Hope this video helps to, uh, you know, to bandage the ankle. And I will do a more videos on how to bandage the knee, the wrist, and the elbow, and the other areas as well. All right, good luck.